Hi, it's Sunday evening, August 4th. Tracking Tropical Storm Debbie in the Gulf of Mexico. As expected, steadily strengthening today, getting organized overnight, started to build the beginnings of an inner convective core. What that means is just persistent deep thunderstorms encircling the center, the center being right about here. There's a little dimple there indicating where Debbie is located. It's been kind of a gradual process. The storm has not rapidly organized an inner core, but it is on its way to completing an inner core and likely becoming a hurricane prior to landfall in the Big Bend region of Florida. If we look at the recon aircraft data from a couple of hours ago, we'll get a new plane in a little bit here. We'll see that the pressure decreased quite a bit during the course of the mission down into the low 990s, indicating strengthening. You will note that the brightest reds and oranges were still pretty far from the center at this point, so the strongest wind was well removed from the center location with more greens and blues, weaker wind at smaller radii from the center. We were starting to see a little bit more yellow and orange here at the last minute with a little bit of a tighter inner ring of maximum wind. That's a key sign to seeing if the storm is becoming organized enough to become a hurricane. So the trend is toward further strengthening and this likely will be a hurricane. The good news is strengthening has not been more rapid than expected yet, but as usual, there is a, a range of possible outcomes before this makes it ashore. Right now, the expectation is a category one hurricane. So that would be max winds of 75 to 95 miles per hour. And there might be an outside chance of winds getting to 100 miles per hour, but that would require things to go perfectly for the storm between now and landfall. And there's always little wrinkles uh, that can disrupt the storm's intensification process. One of those right now is a, just a touch of westerly shear. You'll see some mid-level cloud elements moving left to right on your screen on the western edge of the storm, and that's creating a little bit of dry air that's getting pushed in, getting wrapped into the southern side of the inner core that is trying to form. And if we look at radar imagery, we'll see that most of the deep thunderstorms are concentrated on the north and eastern side of the center with comparatively weak convection on the southwestern side. But there is some now, and so the, the core is becoming a little more symmetric. The more symmetric it gets, and if we get a strong ring of thunderstorms enclosing the center, the more intensification will occur as the system continues northward. We have seen several hazards along the Florida Peninsula so far today. We've had flash flood warnings. We've also had periodic tornado warnings that you can see here. So everyone be careful today as these bands during the daytime heating are producing severe thunderstorms and heavy rain that is causing flooding issues. And that will continue and continue spreading north through tonight. We're also getting water level rises as this strong southerly wind that you saw on the eastern side in the aircraft recon data pushes water up against the coastline. This is Cedar Key, a graph from NOAA showing that the baseline expectation with the tides is here in blue, but the observed value is a few feet higher than that. This might have been an outlier here, but briefly reaching minor flooding stage at high tide today. There will be a low tide, so it'll come down, and then there's another high tide overnight, at which point this could spike several feet uh, given the expectation from the storm surge modeling at the National Hurricane Center, uh, several feet up to potentially 10 feet of inundation expected along portions of the Florida coastline and the Big Bend area. That'll be the big hazard along the coastline. Now, if we look at the satellite animation again, one of the things we're watching for is the short-term motion of Debbie. Where will the landfall location be in northern Florida? And it's sometimes difficult to tell, but in the last few hours, the motion has been at least due north, if not a hair east of due north and this is worth keeping in mind because if we look at the steering flow in the modeling this is the gfs uh, area average sounding around the vortex showing that this morning the deep layer steering vector was just west of due north but it is expected to shift to east of due north starting around the time of this recording and the european model also agrees and it's worth noting that its current longitude is approximately just west of this dotted line center of Appalachian bay so if we're talking about some of the more western outcomes on the western edge of yesterday's possibilities that included places like uh, Alligator Point, Apalachicola, we're starting to take some of the western edge of those possibilities away as it is now moving slightly east and it looks difficult to get west of the center of Apalachee Bay right now. Of course, anything can happen and everyone in the Big Bend should be ready for a hurricane landfall, but this is starting to edge just a little bit east. 
These were the model projections from this morning, showing the location of Debbie here, showing a due northward-ish motion for the first 12 hours, followed by a right-hand turn, taking it into the center of Appalachie Bay. Uh, but if we look at how those are verifying as of the time of this recording at about 5 p.m. Eastern time, these teal dots are where those models had the storm, and the storm is actually centered just a little bit to the east of those expectations. So those little deviations, yes, they do matter. Keep in mind that the exact landfall point doesn't tell you everything. A hurricane is not a microscopic point. It is an area of dangerous weather and it can spread far from the center and the area of hurricane force winds if this does indeed become a hurricane will be some sort of circle like that so the exact center won't necessarily matter whether it's one county over or not a couple of counties will likely be getting the eye wall of the storm as it comes ashore right now this is starting to look kind of like a taylor and dixie county kind of landfall uh, but again everyone in the big band area be prepared for a hurricane hit tomorrow morning. Now speaking of steering flow here, this is the GFS forecasted 500 millibar height and anomaly in coloring showing the storm and the steering features we've been talking about include this ridge over the western Atlantic and this is providing some of the southwesterly flow that is ushering the storm towards the northeast. This little trough over the Appalachians is now weakening and starting to pull out as we speak. So this weakness in the ridge is beginning to weaken and the Great Plains Ridge is starting to nose in to the north. And so this is going to start slowing Debbie down as the storm makes its way inland over the southeastern US. So as you go forward, you'll see it approach Appalachie Bay on Monday morning, and then you can see the ridging nosing into the north. This is starting to block the storm's path, and therefore the forward motion will slow. It's not going to stop, but you can see how it crawls through southern Georgia and northern Florida, hence big rainfall concerns given the length of time that the storm will be spending over land. And as we get forward in time towards Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, we see the storm located near the coastline of southern Georgia and Jacksonville, Florida. And one of the interesting things here is that models still disagree a little bit on the details of how nosy this ridge is at this time. So if we look at the European model for the same time on Tuesday evening, you'll notice that the storm is not too far away, but this ridge is a little bit less nosy compared to the GFS where this 588 line is a little bit farther over. And so what happens on the GFS is this ridge starts to force the storm to turn back toward the left or northward or northwestward rather quickly. So on the model, it gets maybe 24 hours over water and then it goes back inland over Georgia. Obviously bad for rainfall there if it comes back over the same places and drops more rain, but it also means less time over water with which to potentially re-strengthen. On the European model, however, because this ridge influence on the west is a little bit less, the storm gets out over water and stays there for a longer time before turning left. So it ends up going north, not back into Georgia, but instead up towards South Carolina, Myrtle Beach area on this particular model run. That gives it an extra 12 hours or so over water and it ends up organizing further and re-strengthens into a near hurricane on this particular model. Important to stress that this, this is still a fuzzy part of the storm's future, especially given that we have a land-ocean boundary really heavily involved. Whether the storm is over land or over water could just be a couple dozen miles making that difference. And so this is a tough forecast, but the big story here is rain no matter what, big flooding risk. This is the story with Debbie, but we do also have to be concerned about potential storm surge and wind hazards along the coastlines of northern Florida, Georgia, South and North Carolina, if this gets back over water for a significant period of time. Now I noted that these two models disagree on the strength of the ridge. Is that something a human being can go look at and tell you which one is gonna be the correct outcome? Not really, it's not something that experts can really do. That's why we use computer simulation, but this kind of gives us a range of outcomes that we should be prepared for just in case here. There's no clear indication of which one of these will be closer to reality at this time. Now, as the storm is coming back out over water potentially here, this is the upper level flow. And we talked about how there are some westerlies over Debbie when it is coming ashore in Florida, a little bit of wind shear, which will hopefully cap its strengthening rate. Uh, before landfall, but after it makes landfall, it starts to interact with just a little bit of weak troughing over the southern Appalachians, and it starts to reorient this trough in a way that 
they stack together a little bit and there's a little bit of anticyclonically curving outflow on its northern side. If there isn't a ton of dry air getting into the circulation, this is actually a favorable upper level setup for re-strengthening over water if this were to actually come to pass this way. And on the model, if we look at the deep moisture plot, it does happen to show a fairly moist vortex. A little bit of dry air did get wrapped in, but not enough to prevent the redevelopment of an inner convective core on the model. If this were to come to pass this way, there would be a risk of this redeveloping towards hurricane intensity before a second landfall, depending on how broad the circulation is. The broader it is, the slower it would re-intensify, but if it's compact and moist, there is a risk of significant re-intensification if it gets 36 hours over water, like some of these models do show. Now, other models do not show this, and neither does the Hurricane Center forecast, which barely brings the storm back out over water, so there's not really an opportunity for that. But I'm telling you about that scenario in case we see a little bit of a shift to the right in the track, and maybe it gets out over water further, maybe the ridge is not as strong as the GFS thinks, and it spends some time before coming back north worth keeping in mind. There are tropical storm warnings out for Georgia, watches for South Carolina, and of course right now it's about Florida over the next 24 hours with a hurricane warning across the northern Florida coastline from Apalachicola down to Cedar Key area and tropical storm warnings farther down the coastline. We are seeing tropical storm conditions near the coastline of the western Florida peninsula right now. Hurricane warnings in this area mean that expect winds over 75 miles per hour, especially at the coastline. There could still be hurricane force gusts inland of the coast, capable of causing big power outage issues and trees coming down due to the occasional strong gust. And that does happen a lot in the forested parts of northern Florida. And of course, heavy rain and storm surge are concerns. The coastal flooding here is expected to be as high as 6 to 10 feet in this red area from Alligator Point down to Cedar Key, that's where the highest water level rise will be. Typically near and to the right of the storm track is where the highest water level rises will be, but it is very locally dependent. So please be mindful of your evacuation zone and what your local authorities are telling you as you get ready for Debbie coming in. Mild water level rises to moderate several feet uh, along the Western Florida Peninsula as we're starting to observe today and some water level rises possible farther west along the central Florida panhandle as well. And finally, as this comes back toward the southeastern coast in a few days, expect water level rises along the coastline there as well. One of the big stories will be inland flooding due to rain, but coastal flooding from seawater also on the table here for the vulnerable parts of the southeastern U.S. coastline. Speaking of inland flooding, Here's the rain expected from the latest National Hurricane Center advisory coming from the w, uh, from the Weather Prediction Center showing tremendous amounts, really, a belt from a slow-moving storm of 12, 16 inches, over a foot to a foot and a half of rain expected and in flood-prone areas as well, like South Carolina, where Charleston, an area known for flooding vulnerability, this is going to be the story with Debbie. High flash flooding risk. This has been upgraded from the Weather Prediction Center from northern Florida near the landfall through southeastern Georgia and South Carolina. Big time risk here, so be careful and know your risk in your area and exactly where you live and be prepared for that as lots of rain will fall in a short period of time. Freshwater flooding, the big concern here with Debbie. That'll be about it for this video. I'll have further updates as we continue to track this storm, likely to become a hurricane before landfall in northern Florida, and then it doesn't stop there. The rest of the southeastern U.S. be on alert and get prepared for the risks, and stay tuned to your local National Weather Service office and your local authorities for the best information for where you live. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.